We're looking at another section today of the Gloucester to Hereford Canal. It was given Royal Assent in 1791. It was completed building in 1844 and then it was closed in 1881. This is uh, where we're looking at today. We're right in the middle of the canal in Oxen Hall. This is where there's been quite some substantial renovation to one of the locks and to the uh, lock keeper's cottage as well as a spillway and there's also a rather a frightening visit to the tunnel. Stay tuned. Access to our next little bit is down here. And there we have it. Restored. Uh, on the opposite side not quite so restored. But it's there. As is this rather large body of water. This is apparently the headwaters for forges which were working down farther down in the valley. However this is us for today. Oxen Hall. Stay safe indeed. Oxen Hall just outside Newent. And between Newent and Ledbury. Path restored. Just going to have a look, see what's about. A lock and a lockkeeper's cottage. Off to the side here is the sluice. I believe that's a bypass. So there's too much water rather than flood the lock and surroundings. It bypasses it and goes to the lower level. Yeah, there you go. Spill where? That's a well built cottage, isn't it? Very good. I'm making you do a lot of reading on this one, aren't I? I assume you want to read it. Pause video for a reader. That's where we've just come from then. It's a towpath on the right. And that's heading towards Hereford. And then here is the lock. Looking back towards Newend. Next to a brick and stone. Notches here for the gates. And looking like another lock just to there, or sight of. A pebble round on here, look, to give you a grip as you heave on the gates. Quite narrow, made only for narrow boats, obviously. That's from Gloucester. 24 and a half to go to uh, Hereford. The cottage was actually built in 1838. Grade 2 listed. I'm trying to make a picture out of this if we can. Various reflections. Right, this will be another lock. I shored up to put water into this section. Looking into the next lock and then you can just about make out the line of the canal going on down there. Another sizeable body of water there. Apparently that was to drive the bellows for a furnace. Here you can see how the embankment is built up to retain the canal. And here's an aqueduct. It's quite amazing. And the reason for the aqueduct is because we're crossing the stream. Heads up that way. Here's our canal looking very pretty. 
that's where we've just come from. And it wanders on down there. Aqueduct on the other side, that looks wide enough to walk across, doesn't it? Probably its purpose. Off to our left, and I'm struggling to make it out, is what's called the Coal Branch. And that was another narrow canal joined onto this to ship coal and half a mile in that direction. Glorious pile of stone there. Just over the aqueduct then, with the stream now on our left, you have to think that this flat area here is part of the Gloucester Ledbury Railway. They shared ground from here, or rather, the railway took it over. This is where they parted company. And this structure, if I can get to it, would have been the rail bridge. Better shot. It's been skewed round and moved now from its original foundations. Across this stream here, and the railway then carries on through there on an embankment. Just about make it out through there, look. And the canal goes this way. Lock, if it was or not. Up here is where we started, so if we return there and cross the road, see what other delights we can find. Canal there, road there, and we carry it straight on through, thanks to the noise. Standing on the road, then looking back, there's allegedly a connection there with another canal which was called the Coal Branch, for obvious reasons. But, uh, very little evidence. We have walked practically back to the lock now before we see any evidence of ground low enough to accommodate another canal. Through there. Well, looking through there, look. Is a Humped Bridge, so that is the canal, which I reckon means it joins farther up here. The road bridge has gone, so we don't know how wide it was, whether it would have accommodated two canals side by side. But by walking up the road and past the gates, look, there we have it. So it actually joins above the bridge, not below it. Back along the towpath. From the road it didn't look as if there was any water in this section. But indeed there is. Albeit not very much. We continue up the towpath. Camera struggling with the light in the dark as always. And here you see a knoll, and there's a depression. There. So far be it for me to argue with the uh, guide, but I'm afraid they're wrong. So directly in front of us is the main canal, and then they branched off. One going this way, and one going that way. Good. Well, it's such a beautiful day, but we'll just wander along here a little bit. So there's the canal. Heading up this way. It was about the time of the um, canal mania when this started going. Thames to Severn had just been completed and I think everyone was jumping on the bandwagon. 
Unfortunately for this one, it didn't really have any basis in trade. In fact, its most successful year was the year when it carried materials for the railway, which ultimately were filling in their canal to make their railway. As you can see, the sun's out. It's very warm. 13 in the car, probably about 15 degrees. And this is uh, tail end of February. Warmest February on record. Oh, it's absolutely wonderful to be out here in this. Glad you could come and keep me company. What do you think? Too warm for you? Can't please everybody. As far as restoration goes, this section is holding its water. So it just looks as if it just needs a clear out and away you go. You don't get many easy sections like that I imagine. Off to the side a pair of old houses. I imagine they uh, bore witness to the canal in its working days. Look at the size of that chimney stack. Cold Harbour Bridge. I'm not quite sure where the harbour is or was. Probably what in railways are called accommodation bridges, which are built so the farmer can access his fields either side of whatever it is you're interrupting it with. Got to be a picture here somewhere. Buttress of the bridge up there. Looking forward. And we actually cross under the bridge. And looking back. That's where we've just come from. Well in fact it's a proper road. Well it looks like one. You would say probably not used very often. The canal carries on up there as you can see and enters the tunnel. Unfortunately there is no public access, which is a shame isn't it? Never mind. I paused the video there, having spotted that the, the towpath did in fact continue towards the tunnel and uh, obviously had been walked. I decided at a later date to come back and see if I could uh, get there and film the tunnel entrance. Uh, bad move. Where the rock walls close in towards the entrance and the canal has been drilled through rock, the storms of the last hundred years or so have washed out the towpath. So now all there is is a morass of mud and the real prospect if you get off track of stepping into the canal and ending up in four or five feet of water uh, so I would advise that if anybody thinks of doing this, uh, don't do it. It's just not worth the risk. Anyway, onward. This is today's access to the tunnel. And not much chance of getting any closer, I don't think. We're practically in the canal bed to get this far. First sign of the brickwork here. Behind there, I think there might be a shelter, probably for the lensman. Probably a store of some sort, I would think. Salted roof. Taking on any more of this, I've been lucky this far, I think. Auction Hall Tunnel. On its way to uh, Ledbury. You can see how the entrance has been carved out of the natural, as Mr. Robinson likes to say. 
a trickling feeder over there. And this is the approach. Some work to be done there. You don't need to uh, ban the public from here. It's virtually impossible. Well, oh. that's better. I was hoping to do some other way along, to be honest. But the uh, towpath has fallen into the canal and been swallowed up. And then... Apparently, they had lots of trouble with the tunnel, and the finished cost of building it was more than the original cost for the whole canal. But they got there. There you have it. Right, just the usual. If you hadn't already subscribed to my channel, it would certainly help if you did. And also if you clicked either like or share or both. Thanks a lot. And I'll catch you on the next one.